Paramount Pictures. It's Flash Friday. I knew this was going to be good. I knew it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Really appreciate you uh, being here with us, doing business with us. How wonderful is that? For God's sake. How great is that? Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Headlights on across North America. Turn them on, everybody. Headlights on. And ladies, if you see a pair of headlights on, you know what to do. Show them your cans. If you see a nice pair of cans, call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM and uh, let us know what you saw, where you saw it. If you've got a nice pair of uh, fun bags, how about you uh, call us, tell us where you're located so we can come see you, wherever you happen to be. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Just call us here at 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Gina. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi. Oh, I'm nervous. I got on really quick. <laughs> hey, um, you know what? You gave financial advice this week. I always try to remember because I wanted to call you on a Friday to talk about what you talked about all week. And it was just really right on. I, I'm i 35, so I've been through the ringer the last probably <laughs> maybe 15 years. But I, uh, it, you're right when you told that guy about he wanted to start a business, but he had was sixty thousand dollars in debt, and you know what you have to do. I think I want to sell my car to get a cheaper car, you know, to pay off my debts. My car's paid off, so just things like that. It was just so right on. I love you, whatever you talk about, but I really like that. Well, as as you may or may not know, um, I grew up dirt poor, and as an adult, I became a self-made multimillionaire. You know what? I grew up like middle class, and my brothers are both millionaires. <laughs> Not me, but they're both millionaires. Very uh-huh. successful. That's really good to be able to do that. It's just you get the drive, I guess. Well, you have to, you have to like money, and you have to. You know, there's certain things in life you're not supposed to say you like. You're not supposed to say you like drinking. Like people say to me, "How do you know so much about wine?" I say, "Well, I like drinking a lot of wine." Yeah, uh, but that's so politically incorrect, and it's also politically incorrect to say you like money. Many people in this country, especially, they they are guilty. They feel guilty about money. They're embarrassed about having money. Yeah, money is evil. Yeah, or, or yeah. There, somehow you you if you have money, you don't love your friends or you don't love your family or whatever, and so people are afraid to go out and get all the money they can. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that thinking either. I, I think money is a good thing to have, <laughs> definitely. Lots you know? of it. Yeah, exactly. As much so. as you can get your hands on. Yeah. You know what? I don't really... I uh, Sometimes I think I say things just for the shock with people. I, I am very open about how I am and the things I like to do. I mean, you know, I'm not crazy or anything, but... And sometimes it's just funny. It's like you say, people have a different reaction to what you say, but you're being totally honest. And you're like, probably half your family does the same thing, or you do too. You know, the way you act, the way you live, things you like to do. So... That's stupid. Well, the, the the thing that bothers me the most is when people look at me and say, "You're so lucky. You're so lucky." Guess what? I uh, work. Yeah. I have you, over you the years worked hard in your in your life, huh? You don't become yeah. a multi-million unless your parents left you the money. Uh, you certainly don't get that money by being lazy or uh, unmotivated. Absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. My my dad taught me that definitely. 
Yeah. Yeah. Nope. And you know what? That girl who called um, Marie, I think, the girl that was married to the ball player. Yes. I uh, That was interesting, too, just to listen to that. And it's like at first I was kind of like, oh, okay, she's married to a ball player. Who? You know what I mean? It's so hard. You have no yeah. kids. But but as you listen to her, it is, it is kind of sad because the way she's thinking and she doesn't. It's that time alone, I didn't do that either. Take time alone. I went from one to one, you know, and just living with somebody else. And now I'm I'm kind of on my own. I have a boyfriend, but um, I got married. My husband passed away, so I'm on my own now. But that time alone, I you don't want to be alone. You're scared, absolutely. And and it's just it's. I hope she gets out and gets strong and loves herself. You know. Well, it, it's, it's all new. about yeah. I I and it's not just uh, Marie. I think everybody needs to spend some time truly alone. And what Marie doesn't realize is how much time she spends alone now. Yeah, you're right because you were saying that, and you're absolutely right. You know, I'm similar to that. Right? I don't like to be alone, and I think my mom told me that like a year ago. You know, you talk to your mom sometimes. How I'm doing this? She's like, well, you don't like to be alone. So a lot. I think you're right. You know, a lot of my girlfriends, when I talk to them about their problems, and it's over a guy that they're just having a lot of trouble with. They don't see eye to eye. And another thing you say that I love is you have to think the same on every level. And how you say certain things are just a deal breaker yeah. in certain relationships. I, I did that. My boyfriend plays Xbox, and they have an Xbox online. But I'm even more drastic than you, I think. And I don't. I try not to be all crazy and trip out off too many things. But I go, if you go online and start talking to people on that game, I, I can't be with you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't. I don't have the MySpace. I don't chat. I don't do any of that. And I don't want to be with someone because I've seen the result of it from some of my friends. Yeah. You know, and it's like, stop being blind to, oh, I communicate with this. Oh, I've, and you say 86 friends. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, nobody God. nobody oh, has nobody God. has 86 yeah. friends. Yeah. Much yeah. less 800 friends like some people on MySpace claim, you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, well, if I was single, I'd ask you out on a date, but I'm not. So oh, see that? Maybe when I get single, I'll call you back. Well, you know, SoCal works, Gina. You'll be back in the barrel again one day. One day, eventually. By the way, I exactly. can I tell you about an outrageous phone call I got? Yeah. This is absolutely true, and it just happened, okay? I got a phone call, and I am not making this up. I got a call. First of all, I, I got a voicemail, and it was one of these that sounded like an urgent phone call. Hello, I I need to talk to you right away. Uh, here's my number, 714. She gives me the number. Yeah. So I'm like, oh. Did I knock somebody up? What is this? What is this about? <laughs> so I immediately return the call, and it is a woman I have not seen in almost six years. In fact, I I'd, I'd forgotten that she had existed. All right now, keep in mind, she called me uh, back then, and uh, we went out, and uh, I had told her point blank. I I said to her, like I say on the air, because I'm very upfront. I said I have no interest in a relationship. I'm told my my whole interest is in just having some casual fun. That's it. And casual fun, let's define casual fun. That doesn't mean going out and drinking chai tea over there at Starbucks. Casual fun means, you know, we have kind of a physical relationship, kind of a friends with benefits thing. That's what right. I'm into right now. If you're not into that, that's fine, but that's that's all I want. And yeah. she's, oh, yes, absolutely, that's great. So literally, this is now six years ago, she comes to my home. Uh, well, she meets me out. We have a few drinks. She comes to my home, and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to, to put the puck in the net here, right? And You're waiting to do what? Put the puck in the net. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Sorry, I just didn't hear it. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> yes, I'm ready to do a little slam dunk here. Okay, so <laughs> she leaves me for a minute, comes back, says, I can't do this tonight. You know, I have, you know, my thing. I got my thing. Yeah. I said, why, why did you call me? Why did you call me? <laughs> why are you here? Exactly. Yeah. Why are you here? It's yeah. No, you know, we, could, we could get together again next week. No, don't bother. And that's what I told her, and she laughed. And she oh, was totally befuddled by this. Yeah. And I could, by the way, this all came rushing back to me when I talked to her on the phone. So this was like a guy. I, you know, I, I hear about guys doing this all the time, but I've never had it done to me. Yeah. She's like, well, I thought we could try it again. This is six years later. Yeah, that's crazy. Like I've been sitting here twiddling my thumbs waiting for the phone to ring. Are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, I could have been with someone that I really want to spend time with lately, you know, instead of wasting tonight on you. But 
And I think no matter what, and I swear I've had to train myself to think more rational than a woman does. You yeah. know, I have to train myself to do it because no matter what, what I've seen from my friends and experience that, even when you tell that, and you, by you telling a woman that, you're actually giving her the most respect. People that say if you don't respect Oh, women, no, so she took me, this. I told her, we're going to leave things the way they are. That's it. Yeah. And she was like, oh, come on. Don't you want to find out what it's like? Don't you want to find out? Oh, aren't you curious? Aren't I curious? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, back before 9-11, I was curious, okay? But a little time has passed now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that exactly. is how long it's been. It was before 9-11 that I saw this woman. That's crazy. And she now... Out of the blue. Out of the blue. And, like, how do you know I'm not A, married, B, in a relationship, C, banging 12 other people who live a little closer than the 714 area code? How yeah. do you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why in the world would I want to press the rewind button on my life and go back to somebody who, who did that? Go out, have a couple of drinks, come to my house, eat up an entire evening of my life. I'll never get back. They go, I just don't feel good about this. Yeah, exactly. Are you exactly. kidding me? Well, because you set the rules in the beginning, but they don't want to follow the rules or play by the rules. Well, they you think know what I mean? She... And, and then six years later, it's like, that's kind of crazy, though. You wonder... You know, these are the women who think her? these are the women who think they've got the magic vagina. You know, like it doesn't the rules don't apply to them. Like they are just so miraculous. Yeah, exactly. And it's exactly. like you got to be kidding me. Your chance was in two thousand one. <laughs> you and you, know, you passed on it. That's it. By, by you doing that, they love you more. You know that time. Oh, I'm That's sure the phone's going to ring again. I'm sure that phone's going to ring again. But I was blown away. I said, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. no, no, yeah. Yeah. no. Mm. I think it's nice because you have options, too. I mean, everybody has Well, that's the thing. You see, we all have options, but uh, yeah. most people, men and women, act desperate. Women act desperate for relationships and marriage. Men act desperate to get laid, and everybody just jumps in, and they don't bother to have a little self-respect. And by the way, it goes such a long way. When you don't have that, that stink of death on you, you get so much more action. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I work with a lot of guys, and I talk to them. I've been working with them for, like, you know, 12, 13 years. They're, all very, I'm, they're like my brothers. And we talk, of course, we work graveyard shifts and stuff, so we talk about a lot of stuff, you know, at middle of the night and stuff. And so they've all told me, you know, when I was um, married and stuff, they would tell me, you know, he looks at other women. You know he does. And I'm like, okay, and it takes a little while to get and What they it, didn't but, tell you was that they imagine you naked, and they take a sweat oh. sock to bed with them, and you know that's the truth. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I'm just going to let you know, I just got pulled over for speeding. I was listening to you on the radio. The cop went up to make sure my headlights were on and then just let me go. Oh, man, the cops love this show, and we love them. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It's not like a sh show. one 800 tom that's our telephone number. Flash Friday, wide open telephones. Richard, hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? The ratings, my paycheck, the usual. Yeah, well, I'm a guy who's poor, and I'm wondering if you, all the advice you give is just for rich guys. Actually, many of the people who call for advice are not rich at all. If they were rich, they wouldn't need advice. Well, I only get SSI, and I've never gotten more ass than a toilet seat. Well, getting SSI is certainly not the surest way, and you certainly wouldn't want a potential uh, a potential uh, uh, night in the sack uh, to be screwed up by the person knowing you're getting SSI. Well, it gets me depressed not getting any at all, you know? Well, you know, you have to at least give the appearance of having potential. And drive and ambition and saying you get SSI, whether it's fair or not, doesn't indicate that. Uh, it indicates you sit home, wait for the check to come. That's what I basically do. I don't even get four figures. Well, <laughs> women I are. You get seven. I've been listening to you for about seven or eight years now. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And uh, are you completely incapable of working? Yes, I am completely incapable of working. Why is that? What is your disability? Mental illness, depression. Right. That is that does make things difficult. But 
let's be honest. Why would a woman who is normal, who is healthy, who is attractive and desirable, want to settle for being with someone who gets depressed all the time? They're they're all mean. I'm sure they are. You in on something that probably no caller has ever told you. I'm, if I can say the Z word. The Z word. The V word. I'm still a virgin. You're a virgin, and I'm 37. Well, uh, in that case, uh, you have to uh, uh, clearly. There are certain women that are available to you, but they're not the most desirable or attractive ones out there. I have to settle for the fat ones. See, I'm not attracted to the fat ones. I understand that. I, I he- I've heard you say plenty times on your show before that, that fat women are for poor guys. And y- and you are a poor guy. So that's all I can get is a fat one? Uh, th- that's, put and it this one way. that's much older on top of that? My, the, the, somebody that's old enough to be my mother. It's going to be somebody that. It's gonna be somebody with some kind of defect, yes. <laughs> oh. Because, I, I'm not trying to be mean to you, Richard, I, I have people in my family who are bipolar and who have been on medication, and I'm very familiar uh, with that with that problem. Uh, in fact, I was married to somebody who had that problem, and so I'm very familiar with it. One but, of your wives was like that? Yes. Because I know you've been married four times. One of them was like that. And she refused to seek any treatment of any kind. I wanted to ask you something. If I was to get with somebody in, or something and I had sex with her and we had a baby, I don't think I, they could make me pay her anything because my check's a government check. I don't think they could garnish that, could they? I'm not an attorney, Richard. <laughs> if, if that was to ever happen. I'm not an attorney. But we haven't even gotten to that point yet, Richard. You're 37. You haven't gotten laid yet. Yeah. I mean, most people half my age have already gotten laid. That's true. But there are women who will. They're just not the most desirable women out there. Seems like that's what I'm looking for is somebody that, well, at least somebody that I'm it's desirable to me. Yes, but, you know, I go through Craigslist all the time. I look at the ridiculous personal ads on there. And I see these 180-pound whales on there, these chicks, who, uh, they, <laughs> they're looking for guys who are... The woman wouldn't be with me. The only one would be me. They'd have to weigh like 300 or more, it seems. Well, uh, I, don't, I don't know how uh, high you would have to go. But what I can tell you is that, uh, yeah, there's a little problem here where... Uh, Let's face it, what are you bringing to the table? Well, all I bring is my kindness. I've always wanted, I know I'm not taking your advice on this, but I've always wanted a relationship and a family with somebody. I I totally understand that. You understand, though, that uh, the problems that your disability would bring to children. Hmm. I mean, you know how hard it is to live around that? I was married to somebody, and I, I, I told her, you have to get help or I'm going. Oh. Are you on medication? Yeah. What does that do to your sexual performance? It makes me want it more. Really? Because uh, yeah. many, many women who I've met who are bipolar have told me they can't have an orgasm. Oh, well, it makes me want it more. Mm-hmm. I, I live here with other people. I hope the background noise ain't. Well, it, it kind of paints the whole picture for us, Richard. Yeah. I, I, I honestly, I, I feel for you because there are people in my own family who have gone through uh, what you're going through, and it, it, it never goes away. Yeah. And if you forget to take your medication, or you happen to run out of it at an inconvenient moment, it can be really lousy for you. Uh, I'm well aware of all of that. Seems like medication does nothing but does worse for me. And sometimes I just take myself off the crap. And then what happens? Then, then I'm not quite as bad. But I just got out of a drug study too. Paid me a thousand bucks. One of those ones that advertises on the radio. Yeah, I was in one of them. Uh huh. How'd that go? Well, they put me on that medication, and it really made me want sex even more but but i got paid i mean if i'm going to get money i don't care that's how i look at it oh they're, do, they're doing all kinds of clinical trials they advertise them on the radio all the time yeah you can so, just keep going in for the trials so how is it possible for me to get anyone that's what i'm wondering at least that catches my eye 
Well, again, uh, to me, 180 pounds. I've seen some women that are kind of big, don't look bad to me. Well, maybe those are the ones you should but be approaching. Not real big. I, I had this one date. I met. She weighed like 300 pounds. I couldn't even look at her. Where do you meet? Like where do you? Where do you meet these women online? On a. Have you ever heard of a Dateline called Lava Life? I have. I get on there quite often. Uh huh. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, uh, you know, you could certainly try Craigslist. And I wonder why they charge men, but they don't charge women for these lines. Because uh, there's so many more men than women online. But why don't they charge the women, too? Because women like to leave you... Cr because women, women little. are the cheapest creatures on earth, and if they start charging women, you won't hear a whole lot of women on there. Oh. Yeah, and it, I mean, they... um. <clears throat> So I wouldn't hear nobody, practically, if they charged women? Yeah, that that's exactly what would happen. Richard, I feel your pain. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, the way this works, though, is you at least have to give the appearance of bringing something to the party in order to get women who are that attractive. Hey, I thank you for the call. Good luck to you. Uh, Dan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What up? Not much. I just got flashed. Where? Tell me about it. It was awesome, man. It's chicken in the passenger seat of a Volkswagen bus, old school bus. I was on the 91, and uh, I had my headlights on, and she pulled up on the on the you know on the driver's side and said, "Hey, you listening to Tom?" I said, "Yes, I am." And she whipped him out. Perfect, perfect C cup. Awesome, man. Totally awesome. I just wanted to thank you. I love that. Yes, it now, was so beautiful. Now, Dan, let me ask you a question. If you were listening to Jack FM, would you be getting bare breasts in the afternoon? No, I surely wouldn't. Damn right you wouldn't. No. I'm I'm following her now down Beach Boulevard. See if she'll do it again. <laughs> that Beach Boulevard is pretty wild. I tell you what, we get a lot of calls from there. Yep, yep. Orange County, you know how it goes. Thank you, so Dan. I just wanted to thank you so very much. And, uh, you know, anybody else who sees that Volkswagen van, trust me, this chick is hot, and she's got perfect, she's got perfect rack. I totally love it. <laughs> Thanks again, Tom. Blow me up. Here you go, Dan. one 800 tom is our telephone number. Let's say hello here to uh, Jacob on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Jacob. Hey, Tom. How's it hanging? Uh, hanging right right now. That's fantastic. Hey, a couple times on your show, you mentioned you uh, opened up your own small business. I just had a, just wondering what that is. What's um, going on? I own a business that is, I'm a, a theatrical producer, and I produced a show you may have heard about called Boys Night Out. Oh, yes. Well, when are you going to come back with that? And Actually, that? I'm working on that for this fall, and I'm hoping we get that done. Oh, that sounds wonderful. And also, another question, uh, why don't you get yourself like a nice... Uh, Ferrari for a weekend car or something like that. Just curious if you have one or... I don't because I don't drive very much. I I literally am 4.3 miles from work. Well, that's always good then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, I have a, uh, what is it, a two and a half year old Lexus. It's got 16,000 miles on it. Oh, geez. I guess you don't drive very much then, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> All right, well, thanks a lot, Tom. Take me out, Lacer, Lacey Peterson style. Oh, that would be tasteless now, wouldn't it? Emmerich. Hey. Emmerich. Emmerich, you have to 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Gabriella on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. I love your show. Thank you. Um, I'm calling in reference to the Marie phone call the other day in the, uh, in the week. And I have a similar story. Um, I have a best friend that actually was an assistant to a professional ball player. And she would travel with them everywhere. And eventually she started dating an actual baseball player. Um, she knew that he had a family in Florida. Um, he had three children. He flew her out everywhere. Everywhere, you name it. Everywhere he played, she was there. Um, when she couldn't go, um, there would be a package waiting for her at her front door. And every time I'd meet up with her, I'd go, so what kind of purse did he get you today? 
because that would, that's what he would buy her. He would buy her Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton purses, just like Marie mentioned in her conversation, diamonds. I mean, and I would ask her, doesn't that bother you that he has a family in Florida? She was like, no, it's fine with me. I still see him. I mean, it makes me a little sad that I can't see him all the time, but I knew from the get-go what I was getting involved in. And so I mentioned to her the other day that I was listening to your show, and I was listening to Marie's story. And she said to me, she goes, yeah, she was right on. She goes, it goes on all the time, and it's pretty pathetic. She goes, that's why uh, the wives that do travel with all the league players is because they already know what they're up to. So they travel all the time with them. And it's always the guys that you least expect it. You think it's going to be like the A-Rod or the Derek Jeters of the world, but really it's the guy that you never knew it was him. Well, of course, uh, we did see the pictures of A-Rod, what he's been up to. Uh, you've seen yeah. that, right? Yeah, I did. And I said that to her, I'm like, so what's the deal with the blonde? And she's like, that's been going on for so long, Gabriella. She's like, people just have now come to light of it. She's like, <laughs> but it happens all the time. She's like, so it's really sad. So I just wanted to call you and let you know, you know, that uh, I felt really bad for Marie when she was saying it. Um, I kind of understood where she was coming from. And just like all the other listeners that listened to that conversation, I really hope that Marie gets out of that relationship and loves herself most importantly and pursues a more positive and healthy relationship. I hope so. And I just love your show, so keep up the good work. Gabriella, thank you for the call. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. I need my balls reattached, Tom. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Flash Friday. Wide open telephones. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Brandon on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, what's up, Tom? Not much. Well, I know you're a self-made millionaire. I wanted to ask your advice on buying a house. All right. I'm 21 years old, not married. I don't want any kids. My, my credit is fair. Do you have a good idea? Do you have any money? Uh, yeah, finance. No, no. How much money do you have? Right now I have zero dollars. And then it is not time to be looking at real estate. All right. Because uh, when you buy real estate, you need to put at least 10% down. And uh, I would prefer 20% so you could avoid uh, PMI, private mortgage insurance. Okay. I mean, it's that simple. You get, you're you going to buy a house without putting any money down? What is this, this called? Sheets infomercial? I mean, in the real world, we put money down on the house. Well, uh, Pino County out here in Arizona has this bond program. They put 10% down for a first-time home buyer on a new home. Okay, but you should also, you should match that. Yeah. And the reason you should match it, among others, is to keep your payments as low as possible. Mm -hmm. Don't you want to have some equity in the home? I do want to have some equity. But you don't have any money. By the way, owning a house is expensive. Mm-hmm. Ever lived in an apartment on your own or yeah. ever, ever owned property? Ever have the toilet stop up? Ever have uh, a pipe leak? No, I haven't. So you've never had a maintenance issue. Everything has always worked perfectly. For the most part, yeah. Well, let me tell you, when you buy a house, things break. Light switches break, plumbing breaks down, air conditioning stops working, especially in Arizona. And you know who has to pay to fix it? You. Okay. You ever think about that? Not really. Time to start thinking about it, son. You want to own real you. estate, you have to be prepared to maintain it. By the way, on top of that, have you ever tried to figure out how much insurance would cost on a house? No. You must have it. How about property taxes? Yeah, I thought about that. How much? How much do you think property taxes would be? I have no idea. Well, you see, you're not in any way ready to buy real estate, are you? I just started looking. I was gonna stop looking and start learning. Okay. <laughs> Before you look at property, 
you start looking at how much it costs to maintain a house, how much the taxes are, how much the insurance is. If you can't afford to pay taxes and insurance, you can't afford a house. If you can't afford to fix the, the by the way, in Arizona, I owned a house in Arizona. Trust me when I tell you. When that sun is beating down 105, 110 degrees all summer long, your roof goes. Every couple of years, it goes. New roofs like five grand. Do you have five grand? I sure don't. No, you don't. Did your parents own a house? No, they don't. Well, my dad does. Yeah. He's in Kansas. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe you want to ask him some questions about this. Maybe I should. Well. So I called you. I know you got some pretty good advice. Right. Well, here's what I'm telling you. Uh, owning a house is expensive, and you don't have any money. True. If you don't have money, you can't afford to own and maintain a house. Well, I make around thirty grand a year. That's nothing. I know. <laughs> By the way, what college did you attend? Sure didn't go to college. Oh, big mistake there, son. Yeah? Maybe you ought to be investing your money and going back and finishing college. Well, I agree. I, I would like to go back to school. I'm just not sure what I would like to do yet. Son, you're 21 years old. It's time to make some decisions. you got to stop smoking weed and hanging out with your girlfriends and whatever. And you got to start figuring out what you want to be when you grow up. And your father, because your parents have split up, is not around to kick your ass like he ought to. That's true. And that's why you're wandering around completely unfocused, aren't you? Yeah. Right. I imagine. <laughs> right. And I'm uh, right, right? You smoke weed. You booze it up. You got girls. You're too busy to be going to school, right? I'm not too busy. I'm just pretty lazy. Lazy. Wonderful. Lazy people do not own houses. Lazy people live in apartments and pay rent to the landlord, who is ambitious. Yeah, and that's what I don't like doing. Well, you yeah, well, you, you, but the thing is, before you buy a home, you have to fundamentally change the way you think. Okay. That means not being lazy. Well, when it comes to getting, like, stuff I had to get done, done... I get it done. Wrong, because you're not in college. What's this wonderful job you have? I'm in sales. <laughs> and you're only making 30000 a year? You must not be a very good salesman. Well, guess not. <laughs> right. And you're not even that interested in being a salesman. That's the kind of job you have to take when you don't go to college and you don't know what you want to be when you grow up. Mm -hmm. Right, son? That's, that's true. Right. So don't you think it would be worth spending some time figuring out who you are as a person and what you actually want to do? I totally do. Well, then it's time to start doing it. Okay. But you're not ready to buy a house. You're not going to be ready to buy a house for the next five years at least. Okay. Well, so I should just go take some like, prereqs and then... Take a placement test or something? The first thing you need to do is figure out what you want to do for a living. Okay. And if that means you have to drop, uh, you know, 150 bucks and go to a, go up to like Jerome or Cottonwood for the weekend or Sedona and uh, put yourself in a hotel room by yourself with a yellow legal pad and start writing down the pluses and minuses of doing various jobs, then that's what you have to do. And then when you figure out what you want to be when you grow up, then you have to figure out what school you're going to go to to get the skills you need to succeed. Okay. But if your plan is just to be a lazy person and just to wander around aimlessly the rest of your life, forget about buying real estate. People like you can't afford real estate. Well, I'm glad I called you. Well, I think I was the right person to call. I would call your dad, too, though, and ask him about the uh, responsibilities of owning a house. He'll tell you. Derek on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey. Hey. Um, I was actually calling in regards to the uh, Mead guy yesterday. 
he said ambition is all you need to succeed. I call that bogus. Um, I, I had a high school. I chose not to go to college, and I've worked my way up as high as I can possibly go on my trades without a college education. I'm currently looking to get into role at ASU come fall. I'm a single dad, and I, I hate to tell him he was wrong. You can have all the ambition in the world you want, but you're not going to get a nice high-dollar office job with only ambition. Yeah, well, you, you, but the thing is, a lot of people talk about ambition, uh, but they're not really ambitious because saying I have ambition is not the same as putting your nose to the grindstone and working. Exactly. And like I said, I, I've worked my way up as high as I can go in my trade. I've busted my, my fingers to the bone every day of my life since I graduated high school. And I, I can't get any higher in my trade without a college education. Mm -hmm. And that's the point, in fact, that I'm saying is he was wrong by saying you can get places in life without a college education. You can't do it anymore. I mean, yeah, there are the rare exceptions, but it's few and far between. And you don't want to take a chance on being one of them because most people do not succeed without a exactly. college education. Like I said, I'm, I'm 26 years old. I'm a single dad. I want to provide for my daughter what I wasn't able to have growing up, and the only way for me to do that now is through a college education, which is why I'm currently working on getting enrolled in ASU come fall. And basically all I had to say on that subject with him. Derek, good for you. I'm proud of you for realizing that and going and doing something about it, for God's sake. James on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Tom. James. Hey, how's it going? Great. Uh, well, that advice you gave that uh, guy a few minutes ago was phenomenal. If he follows that, there's no reason he shouldn't succeed. That was some of the best uh, advice I've ever heard. Thank you. And uh, the best on the radio, for sure. Thanks very much. Um, um, I got a little bit of problem. Um, I've been battling with this issue for uh, a few years now, and I tried to get on a few weeks ago when you were talking about this particular segment, and uh, you had mentioned that uh, that your father was uh, was a drinker and uh, and all of that, and I tried to get on there. And the question that I have for you. It should I feel resentment towards my father for that, uh, for the, I don't know, maybe the first 12, uh, 13 years of my life, my dad did uh, really nothing but drink and work and, uh, and do poorly at both. Uh, so he was never really there for, for me as a child, I feel, to give me that uh, uh, kick in the ass. Now, to get things are you, as a result, are you a failure as an adult or have you found a way around it? I don't think I'm a failure, but I think I would benefit more had I had that. Um, I grew up lower middle class, and I would say that I'm there right now, but I've, I've, I'm definitely working on changing that. I've recently bought a house. Uh, uh, I've, I've got a good-paying job, um, and I'm actually in the middle of uh, a couple of things going on, and I'm not really concerned so much about that. Uh, uh, success is relative, and it doesn't have a whole lot to do with money. It just has comfortability with uh, living and I'd rather uh, I'm working on the money part I'd re much rather be comfortable with myself and my place in the world right now than than worry about money All right, well uh, let me so let me give it to you a short form here because I only have about a minute left and right. and and this is the deal uh, having resentment towards your father only hurts you right not gonna hurt him right so you think I should have a talk with him and maybe say what I feel and uh I mean, he's all the way in a different state. I live in Arizona, of course, and, and he's in Mississippi. Only if it would uh, make you feel better. Do what, I, do what I think would make me feel better. Right. So I should not worry about what anybody thinks, not even the, my parents. Nope. Do what's best for number one. That's right. That's what I did. Believe me, there was a lot of resentment in my family for going out and becoming a multimillionaire. Well, you know. Because I was happens. showing up my dad. <laughs> Uh, but I didn't care. I did what was good for me. Perfect. Hey, thanks, Tom. James, thank you. Do, you know, when your parents screwed up, uh, let's face it, getting angry at them, what do they care? They did what they wanted to do. Now you do what you want to do. Don't waste your time, energy, or anger being angry at your parents. The Tom Likas Show.